Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. Today we're taking a look at a game I was pretty excited when it showed up, AGNC, and that's mostly because the designer is Carl Chudik, who is, he's known for, he's done a lot of games, but he's easily best known for Glory to Rome mm -hmm. and Innovation, probably, the two. Maybe Red 7, but <laughs> probably yeah. not. Um, and a lot of his games are published by uh, Asmati Games, which this is one of those. And I was excited because I think this cover looks beautiful. And so I thought, ooh, a Carl Chuddock game with some really nice art on it. Not dissing innovation by any specific means. Innovation is super ugly. I don't know what Chris is talking about. Um, but yes, uh, Asmati Games are not necessarily what we would call lookers. But... His games are always different, and this one promised on the back that there's 220 unique cards in this game. I'm very pumped about that. So let's take a look at how it plays, and we'll be right back. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get a their starting home. So you have Creed, Ephesus, Sparta, and so on. Each of these has a reference card, and on the front of the reference card, it tells you what you can do on your turn, and then on the back of it, it gives you your special ability. You're going to have to be constantly flipping for a while. This is, in essence, your island for the game, your home island anyway, and then there's going to be other islands out here. You'll have these place here to show that something's an island. Each player has their own deck of cards that matches them. So if I'm Rhodes, I'm going to be playing with the deck that matches me, which are the wood deck because these can be resources. As the game goes by, if one of these, we'll start with a couple of these cards in the middle. These are islands that people can go to. But cards are often going to be, they can be one of five things. They can be an island, which this one is. If it's tucked under the side on this one here, it's a ship. And ships will have the ability to move from island to island. You also have population, which you can add. Whoever has the most population on an island, let's say one of my opponents has an island here. If I have population there, I control it. If there's ever a tie for population, then whoever owns the island controls it. Um, there's going to be goods. So this is a wood good on this island. This is a marble good. And you'll have different goods on the islands. So all the decks are in the game, even if you're only playing, say, two players. You'll still have the other decks in the game because you'll need those goods. And then finally, temples. You build a temple at the top, and there can be temples on islands. The deck is an important part of the game. When the deck runs out and players then need to do a draw action, that's going to trigger the end of the game. But on your turn, players are going to have an option. You're going to look at the cards that you have in your hand. Now, cards that you have in your hand, they can all be wood re resources, but you also notice that they have a symbol on them, uh, and those symbols are on different sides. There's also like a line on the card, or in this case, uh, an image here of this snail, and these are used to show the affinity of the card, and that's going to matter for the action that you're going to take. So when you spend a card, you're going to look at the affinity. This is a die preference, this die preference of this card, a purple card. This one has a marble preference. You'll spend that card to do an action. A bronze action lets you add a population to any of the inner islands in the middle. And that card, and in, in fact all these cards that let you play a card, that other card has to come from your hand, so you have to have a card to be able to do it. A marble action lets you add a temple at an island, even a home island. A die lets you add an island on the board, so if there's an empty spot to place an island, you can add an island to that, or you can pick an island that you already have and activate it. Each island has a special ability. So this one, for example, says pay a good here to add three populace here. So if there's a good here, I could discard it to add three populace. However, that action also, I must be able to do it. So if I want to add that three populace, I better have them in my hand. Timber lets you add ships to islands, or you can take your island from one spot to another. And ships can carry populace, so you'll have a chance to take over other islands from one island to another, and they can also carry goods. And carrying goods is an important part of ships because you're trying to get these goods to your home island. Electrum lets you create goods, and you'll put that at an inner island, and then lets you draw cards. And that's the only one that lets you draw cards. Instead of taking one of these actions where you spend a card from your hand, you can also place a card directly from your hand as a populace or as a ship on your home island. You also have the action of completing a quest. Whenever you use a card, so if I use this timber card here, for example, 
This car lets me add a ship to an inner island or sail a ship like Timber always does. And then I can immediately use the card if, I'm a, if I can pull it off. Sometimes you can't pull off the card. This one says add a populace here, then Zephyrit, which just means kind of transport something, and one of your ships here to an island. If I wasn't able to do that, I can keep the card as a quest. That's confusing terminology. Keep it as a quest basically means I'm saving the special action on this card for later. So later on, I can do that as my action. And the main thing you can do is you can refresh a hand and then you draw up to four cards plus the number of revered temples you have. And a revered temple just means any temple on an island that also there is a matching good of any type at that same island. Like you're going to keep doing this. There's a little bit, there's conflict at the end of a turn. If you and someone else is populous at the same island, you'll discard top card of your deck, see what preference it is, and you kill population of other ones. There's also something called Vainglory. If any of these inner islands, these small islands in the middle, has 11 plus one for each player in the game, cards there, everything is discarded. So that's one way that islands get cleared out. At the end of the game, you're going to look at all the goods you have on your island. And each good is basically equal to the square of, that, of the number you have. So here I would have one marble worth one point and four of the timber, which would, I'm sorry, yeah, they're all timber. And those are going to be worth 16 points. On the other side, every player, everything has their own special ability. So Sparta, for example, if they go down to one card, they can discard to get a free action on their turn. And they, they can build statues where they put cards like this. And those can be worth two points at the end of the game. Uh, one of the factions gets points for temples they have out on the board. One can tax and trade other people. So those special abilities might affect scoring at the end of the game also. Whoever has the most points is the winner. If you were confused by that overview, well, that might be on me, but also the game itself is not particularly intuitive. That might be strong. I mean, there's not a lot of rules. There really isn't. I mean, I think that the rule book is, I mean, it's what, 15, 13 pages plus two pages of FAQ, but there's not a lot of rules. This is not, and in theory, you can build a temple you can put a good out there, you can take a ship and ship a good back to your island, and then you can have soldiers, right? This, it's one of those games where you could, in a reductionist manner, say, well, there's like four rules to the game. But there's an, it's, it's more of those points of interaction. It really is. And the game itself, you'll find yourself clogging up occasionally in the sense of, okay, I can play this card, which will give me a good. This will be the good. Or, well, not the good's the wrong one. I'll play this card, which will turn something into a ship. Okay, this will be my ship. Now I'm going to use a special ability on this card. Oh, wait, I can't use a special ability. But the good I was about to play as a ship is also a good that lets me put a ship out. So I'm just going to reverse the two cards. Except for when you can't and you go, oh, sorry, guys, hold on. i got to roll back this whole <laughs> turn. It's an interesting rule, the idea that you have to do a card uh, you know, to completion. Otherwise, you can't play it, which is... Uh, I'm not mistaken about that, right? No, no yeah, that, that's true. So you can... That, that is a kind of an interesting concept, and you also have to have the cards in your hand and things like that. I just don't know that that adds to the game at all. I think it's one of those clever ideas, and it, it definitely creates restrictions. So if you're someone who likes playing with restrictions, who likes being able to break through some really challenging puzzles, I want to do this card, I want to play it because it's going to allow me to put temples on like eight different islands, but you can't do less than eight, meaning you have to have a hand of functionally ten cards at that point, to be able to pay for everything, a lot of those special cards are going to drive your strategy. So you're reacting to kind of the cards that you draw, but then also your factions are going to definitely drive what you need to do. And I think, in this, maybe it's just my opinion, in this game, to a fault, how strong those factions will, will drive you. Yeah. Um, I want to come back to that. I want to take a brief detour into components at the beginning we made some, I made a joke about the ugliness of Asmati games. This one is better because it has this artwork on the back of the cards. I don't know that I need artwork on the cards, but the home islands are terrible because you need to be able to look at all your options. Maybe after many games, you'll know what those options are. But I still don't remember, for example, 
I always have to look and see what, what each one does. It's not intuitive. What does marble do? I, I don't remember, actually, even now. Right? So I have to look that up. Bill Temple. But is there is there a sub-step to that? Right? You then have to take a different card from it and put it in the temple. And then some of them have a little extra, little boost, a little juicy boost on it. But you have to remember what those all are. But what I'm saying is the fact that you have to flip over your home island, which is an island, is a real pain. And even more of a pain and fiddly on the board is moving the ships and goods and, and people. It's a real pain. We played it on a playmat, not on a playmat. It was bad in both situations. And I just felt like that was fiddly. I don't know a better way to do it because, oh, we want to turn a card into a ship. I mean, you could technically just discard the card and put a little wooden ship out there. I That's the same thing, right? It, that, that, that ship never becomes... Well, actually, no, because we're going to turn a ship into a good. Oh, my gosh, you're right. Yeah, it, It's one of those difficulties where the form factor of this game is everything needs to be a card. And I feel like this one got... A, like It kind of got away from that. I would have much preferred to be able to put some resources out in ships... Uh, keep one of them as cards and put the other thing as cubes out there when you're transporting them around. But the the form factor of all being cards, as you said, just leads to sloppy, I'm pulling the third good in, oh man, I just messed everything up. Constantly. Now with all these games, and uh, there's a lot of chaos in this game. And uh, I knew there's a lot of chaos in his, uh, his other games, which I have liked some and not liked others. But I really like Innovation. But innovation, I feel very strongly, it's best with two, by a mile. AG&C falls into that category, too. It's best by two, with two. But in AG&C, it's a little more almost grotesque in how different it is. Because in AG&C, there's more, with more players, there's more stuff around. The islands, whatever that term is, break more easily. By the way, I don't like the terminology in this game. Zephyr and just... Quest, those cards don't match what you're doing. But it's 11 plus the number of players. Well, in a two-player game, it's going to take us a while to get 11 cards in an island. Or 12 cards. Or 13 or whatever it is. 13 cards. It's 11 plus the number of players. But it's 15 in a four-player game who are putting out twice the number of cards possibly. Uh, and and when, one ju- when island is juicy... People are going to race towards it. And at some point, you have a very viable chance of saying, well, I'm just going to break that island. I'm just going to have it be completely overrun because I'll have two cards there. You have six cards, and that hurts you more than it hurts me. So I'll happily do that. And and be this whole idea of setting things up. I mean, the game is about getting goods and shipping them back to your island. And yet at least two of the factions have powers that basically say, I can ignore that. Or I'll do it a different way, which changes the game a lot. And because of the mass chaos in the game, you have to get your ship there, hope the goods are still there, hope you can control the island. And in a multiplayer game, I just I think agency is is more functional too than more. But with multiplayer, it's a mess. It's just a mess. I I there's no disagreement there uh, about that. Uh, the the factions I, I mentioned that earlier, right? One of the factions, you basically just want to build temples. Right. And and hope that there's still islands out there. And then randomly at the end of the game, you flip over your last card. Whatever card resource goods type it is, you're going to score islands. Or you're going to score points for those temples you have on islands that have a good there. There's like four layers of chance that come to it. And the points that you get from that can basically supersede doing any of the actual good shipping of the game. And so you're just kind of playing this weird roulette game. But that's what you should do if you're that faction, because your faction cards are not strong enough at doing anything else besides building temples. So you really have to lean into it. And that's another one of my biggest problems with the game is each of these factions, there's a, they, oh, every card is different. Some cards are like, put a ship out, move a ship. There's, there's some real basic cards. But each faction has some really cool cards for their faction, which might be used as a good by another player, or might be discarded for whatever reason. I I don't like that. I also think a lot of things in this game, I think the combat system is terribly boring. And I could stop at terrible. I don't like it at all. But it's also boring. It's confusing. I, I'm looking for something I like. I like the, the different faction abilities. I think they're interesting. 
But I also feel like they say, hey, play this way. And you're like, yeah, I got it. I like multi-use cards. It's probably one of my favorite game mechanisms. So at its core, I appreciate and I enjoy what's going on here in that, okay, I have this card. It has this power, but I'm going to forego this power and forego this good type to use it as a shipping action. I love that. And that's part of why I enjoy Carl Chuddock's games as much as I do. Uh, Glory to Rome, Motainai, uh, even Red 7 a little bit, right? But this is one that gets away from me, I think, because of just those strange points of interaction. How it's, it's, it's a mucky game. It is fiddly. Yeah, I'm giving this game, unfortunately, I'm giving it a 4. I really wanted to like it. And what's interesting is we played it, and it was chaotic, and I thought, okay, well, maybe my tastes have changed somewhat. So right after, uh, and also I wanted to play a two-player of it, so I did with Chris, and then I said, all right, after this, let's play Innovation. It's been years since I had played it, and I want Chris to see it. And it just felt like night and day. It's same designer, same company, same used cards as various things, although in Innovation, they're not really. Innovation is slightly different, but mm-hmm. it's very chaotic. The difference is Innovation for me I feel like I'm doing really fun, clever things with the chaos. I have this card that lets me take these and do this, and I, and, and and it just and it, it gets better as the game goes by. The cards you're drawing from different decks, it gets more exciting. It's still chaotic, but it's fun chaos. A, G, and C for me is chaos and confusion with a lot of rules and things. But never did I really have any fun. It, slowly slogging ships out to grab some goods and slowly slogging them back. To get a few points, it's a very low-scoring game. Or building some statues just to watch someone blow it up and then going to build it again. I did. There was no. Pro, There's no progression in this game. You're doing the same thing at the end that you're doing at the beginning. And I just, I don't like it. I was kind of waffling between a four and a five, which is, you know, neither score is, is great. But I, I, I will also come down on a four on this one because, and I think that the clincher is what you just said, that there's never a sense of progression. There's never a sense of of having more to do and more that you're able to do a little bit with card draw. With the exception of that one thing. That's true, your thing, card draw goes up. But with the exception of that one thing, I feel like there's not enough compelling me to say, yeah, let me give this one another try. I've played it with the, all the different player counts. There's not a good one. So, uh, unfortunately for me, that's a four as well. Well, there you go, folks. That's Agency. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. It's all Greek to us. <laughs>